All right guys, let's take a look at the Venturi tube. We're gonna do this as a closed loop. So it's gonna be the exact same as the orifice plate in that we have the flow. So let's take a look, closer look here. We have the flow coming from the pump here. So this is our output from the pump. And you can see that it's going over to the Venturi tube. Again, you wanna keep track of your flows. If you change the flow, you're not gonna get a, a pressure output from the DP cell. So we have the incoming flow here little bit of a straight piece of pipe before it smacks into the venturi tube the venturi tube is basically taking the the diameter of the pipe reducing the the diameter to create a restriction and that creates a high pressure port on this one right here and a low pressure port on this guy right here and that's just because we have the flow reduced here so the static pressure increases here the flow based on bernoulli's principle increases at the vena contracta, I love saying vena contracta. So it goes through here and then uh, this is where the flow is the fastest. So that's where we're gonna uh, pipe off our low pressure port. And we have our high pressure going to the high pressure port of the DP cell. And then we have the low pressure port going to the low pressure port of our DP cell. Okay, as this was uh, flowing, what I did was I took a longer tube and I drained out from each of these stainless steel fittings. So from here back to the pump and here back to the pump. And that gets rid of the air bubbles that are gonna develop in each of these pipes as soon as we connect it up. So you have to have a decent flow in order to get the, that to push that air bubble out and back to the tank. And especially on the low pressure side, uh, you need quite a bit of flow to push that air bubble out and back to the tank through those two check valves in the bottom. Okay. Wiring wise, you'll see that <clears throat> we have 24 volts to this pressure transmitter. And in this one, instead of just having the voltmeter here, we are bringing a line from the zero to five and we're bringing it back to our IO interface. We've jumpered it over to the other terminal so that whatever voltage this guy sees, this guy's gonna see the exact same voltage. What's crucial is that your power supply and your IO interface reference the same common. So if you don't have this jumper here between either of the commons, then you're not gonna see a voltage. Now we had this on the previous video for the orifice plate. If I take this, so that jumper out, then all of a sudden that voltage disappears. Bring it back and then it will settle out. Okay, so at this point, um, I also have two wires going from the analog output. So analog output number one, and a common connection. And they're going over to the pump. And we're having the zero to five volt output to the zero to five and common common. And that sends a zero to five volt signal to the pump and allows this pump to go from zero to 100% speed. Okay, valving here, uh, HV1, sorry, HV2 is closed. That's a bypass valve. If I open that one up, then a portion of my flow will come back to the tank, which I don't want. I want all the flow going out to the field. My return is here on HV1, so I need it open. And HV3 is pointing up here, denoting that all of the water from the tank is going to the pump, okay? If you're doing any of these lab volt, uh, if you're a teacher and you've got some lab volt stations, I'd love for you to give some feedback in the comments uh, as to whether you've done this lab before or in which uh, settings work for you. So at this point, you can see that I've got a voltage there on the meter, 0.3 volts. And now that I've sent that signal in, then the same voltage, let me just center in here, the same voltage is now on my screen. So in order to do that, we had a number of different things that we had to do. So <clears throat> let's see, in order to get the, let me just bring my mouse up here. In order to get the computer talking to that IO interface, we clicked on work with the pr process control trainer. Then we went to set up and we said enable communications. And then that allowed this box to talk to the computer. And you can see at the back that those two LEDs are now chirping at me, telling me that I'm receiving and transmitting information. And then that same five volt signal, make sure this dip switch is down so that it registers five volts. If I change that dip switch, then you can see the voltage changes. So keep it at five volts reference. Okay, so that enables it to talk to the IO interface. In order for that flow and voltage to be there, 
I went, I went, did that a little bit too fast, so let me just bring it back here. I went to setup, I went down to configure analog inputs, and then I dropped in the flow. We're going from nine and two liters per minute, and we're gonna have to extract the square root. That's because the voltage that we're initially looking at, the five, the zero to five volts DC voltage, is gonna give us this output. So you can see that it's gonna give us that uh, exponential curve. So what we need to do is we need to take the square, square root of that, because you can see here that that voltage corresponds to the square of the flow. So in order to have a signal that actually references just the flow, well, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other side. So in order to get rid of that square, we take the square root to end up with the flow. But again, whatever we did to this guy, we have to do to this one. So we'll end up taking the square root of that value. And that gives us a nice linear relationship between the flow and the actual voltage that we're getting off of it. So we're going to take this 0 to 5 volts that gives us the exponential curve, and we're going to extract the square root so that our flow gives us a nice linear relationship with the flow. Okay, so we're going to hit File, Accept and Return to the Trainer. Yes, that's good. And then in order to have these lines on the bottom, um, we're going to go to Trend, click Set Point, Analog Input, and this one should already be clicked for you, Auto Rollover and Clear. Make sure that's clicked, otherwise it'll fill up the memory and kick you out of the program. Next thing, we got to go over to the uh, controller and we're going to go to tuning constants. So what I want you to do is I want you to, to change the proportional band to 500. That means that um, the gain on the proportional amplifier is going to be small. The larger the band, the smaller the gain. That means that it's going to be slow acting, which is good because as soon as we have a change in flow, then this pressure will change instantly. So if we have our closed loop accommodating for that really fast uh, by having a low band or high gain um, then the pump is going to turn on and turn off turn on and turn off so let's try a 500 percent proportional band and we're going to put just a little bit of integral in there the integral is what happens when, when it gets close to this this flow it may be a little bit below the integral is going to close the gap and get us exactly at our set point derivative we don't want whatsoever because this is a fast acting loop so we're gonna get rid of the derivative. Once you put these guys in, hit close, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Now, what I did was I got it to, so I put it in manual at this point. I brought it up to my 50%, and let's just bring her down to five and a half liters per minute, okay? So now we've got five and a half liters per minute showing on the screen, and you can see that I roughly have um, five and a bit. I mean, it's accurate, but not deadly accurate here in the in the lab. So I'm just over five in the manual. Okay, so the, the actual flow that's on my screen is mimicking what's on my rotameter. At this point, you may want to stop the video or just pause the video and write down these. These are our expected flows. So at 0% that we set that at two liters per minute, our max flow is gonna be nine liters per minute. And then each of our subsequent values, 25% is 3.75, 50% is five and a half, and 75 is 7.25. The way that they got, we got these was we took each of those percentages, and you can see that they're in between the two and the nine, we have seven equal values. So you take the percentage of the seven, add your elevated zero, and that's how you get each of these subsequent values. Okay? so. Now that we've taken a note of those guys, what we're going to do is we're going to now bring it into having the computer take over. So I'm at five and a half liters per minute. Let's see if I'm actually at five and a half. So again, I'm just about there, not bad on the road meter. Okay, so I'm actually where I want it to be. And now looking at my set point, my set point is at 25. So I'm going to change that so that when I go into automatic, so you go here, set point, you can change it down here, but then all of a sudden it goes to 100% and then to your set point. This is a lot smoother, so I'm going to change this to 50% because that's where I am in actuality. So you can see here that my set point is now increased. I'm at that value, and now I'm going to have the computer take over. If I did it from 25%, it 
it just the computer would have to accommodate for that change in set point right away. So now the computer is trying to keep track of my flow and you can see that the flow is exactly the same as it was before. Minor fluctuations there. So you can see that in the trend recorder if I can get it to focus here. So minor fluctuations there. And that's just because you can see that the flow is moving a touch. You can see that rotometer bouncing up and down. So that's reflected in the pressure that develops across the uh, Venturi tube. So let's go to 75%. Now remember we have the proportional gain really low by having the band high. And so at 75%, we should see seven and a quarter liters per minute. Remember this is an exponential curve that we're looking at. So at low flows, we're gonna get low voltage and at high flows, we're gonna get the higher voltage. But we're looking for 7.25 liters per minute. So we hit close and this guy will slowly increase Beauty to 7.2, just climbing up there, right? So you can see that on my trend recorder, I'm getting close and now I should be locking into that value. And on these values, it says that I got 2.75 and I'm at 7.22. And again, that voltage is mimicking here. There's 2.81. And so as the voltage changes on this screen, it's mimicking what's seen on the meter. And now we're supposed to be at 7.2 liters per minute. And you can see that we're just shy, just around 7 liters per minute. So that's pretty good. That's as accurate as we're probably going to get in the lab. Beauty. Okay, let's take one more step. Let's do the, we've checked the 75, we checked the 50. Let's do one more and check the 25%. Twenty-five percent should be uh, three point seven five liters per minute. So you can see here that we're slowly reducing in flow. Should be around four now. The voltage is really, really low. Now this is a Venturi tube, so remember at low flows it's not that accurate. So let's see on the rotometer how close we are. We're supposed to be at three point seven five. Well, that's pretty good. There's three, right? We're about 3.5, 3.6, right? So not again, not deadly accurate on low flows. Better for higher flows there. But that's pretty mint. We've got we've put in the parameters. You can see that half the battle is calibrating it, then changing the parameters um, so that it reacts properly and gets to the right flow um, is a science in itself. Let's do one more time, going to 75%. We'll see how quickly we can rock up there. 75% was supposed to be 7.25 liters per minute. And we're already up to six and a half, 6.75. Rocking up to seven. And eventually getting to 7.25. And again, we're roughly there. there was, we're hovering at seven liters per minute. So, beauty. Okay, now watch what happens. Now that everything's set up and we've seen that we've been able to get that closed loop control with this nice, tight control and not no overshoot or anything like that. Watch what happens now if I bring in some derivative. So I'm just going to bring in some derivative. As soon as I do that, look what happens to the pump. It goes crazy. So it takes all this noise that's here, those minor fluctuations, and now the pump is going nuts. So derivative is definitely not needed for this one. So we'll get rid of that. And as soon as we get rid of the derivative, then all of a sudden it relaxes. and brings us back to the flow that we were looking for. Right, again with 
minor, that there won't be any overshoot whatsoever. So the proportional band is uh, is low. If we in sorry decrease the proportional band, which means that we're increasing the gain on the proportional, it's also going to be really sensitive. So it starts oscillating and essentially works the same as if we had that derivative in. So that is brutal. That's because the, the pressure changes instantly with flows. The pressure on either side of the, deep, of the Venturi tube changes instantly. So this is probably the best that we're going to get. 500. We could um, try to play around with the proportional band a little bit and try to play with the integral. The in integral closes the gap. So as we get closer and closer to that flow, then uh, it provides a little boost to the proportional because the proportional signal gets really, really small. Cool. So at, uh, we're at 75%. We're supposed to be at 7.25. And eventually, I had too much coffee. My hand's shaking here. So 2.6, 2.9, right? And you can see that it settles out now and it's actually reflecting what's going on out in the field. Beauty. All right guys, if you've gotten this far, this is awesome. You've been able to create a closed loop control uh, using the Venturi tube. The Venturi tube created a high pressure on the inlet, a low pressure on the outlet. We have the DP cell that either uses a strain gauge or uh, a piezoelectric component to create a voltage. That voltage is boosted up. In this case, uh, it's coming out as a 0 to 5 signal, but could be a 4 to 20. That's going back to the controller. That voltage is mimicking what we see on the screen here. So we got 2.7. We have 2.7 now on the screen here. And we've taken the square root. And the reason for taking the square root is that the increase in pressure across the either the orifice or the venturi is an exponential curve. So we're taking the square root to provide a linear relationship. And now we've got a signal here that directly corresponds to the flow that we're seeing with our visual indicator with the rotometer. Then we put in some uh, proportional in integral, left out the derivative, and we're getting nice, tight, close, closed circuit uh, control in that if we change the set point here, so again, we'll drop her down to 50 just before we shut her down. And again, this should drop down to five and a half liters per minute. And we're getting nice tight control over the flow in that pipe, right? Slowly dropping down. And again, you can see that this is really accurate. There's five liters per minute and we're just above that, close to five and a half liters per minute on the rotomere. Excellent. Nice job, guys.